You finally know how to edit on After Effects. But your edits keep flopping. How come no one wants to watch my videos? But then you realize that your text looks like it's been made on CapCut. No wonder I get zero views. If only there was someone who could help me. If your edits still look boring, you have to start using these six text effects to finally go viral. Starting from beginner all the way to advanced. And the first animation you will learn is the simple fade up words effect. Before we add the animation, we want to make our text look a bit cooler. So go to your effects and presets panel and search for bevel alpha. Drag it onto the text layer and leave the settings how they are. Next, search for deep glow. Again, drag it onto the text layer and put the radius from 500 down to 400 and the exposure from 1 to 0.2 so we can actually read the text. And by the way, if you can't find any of these plugins, you can get them from my Discord. Lastly, search for drop shadow, drag it onto the text, put the opacity from 50 to 100, the distance from 5 to 0 and the softness from 0 to 100. Now that our text looks good, we're going to get to the actual animation, for which we can use a standard After Effects animation preset. To find it, we're going to go to effects and presets again and search for fade up words. Now make sure your time indicator is located where your character starts speaking and drag the preset onto your text. As you can see, our text now disappeared and when we select the text layer and press U on our keyboard, you can see we have two new keyframes. But when we play the clip, you might realize that the text is completely off. Ashley! Look at- It's not synced whatsoever. And to now sync it, we're gonna click onto our video layer right here and press L twice to bring up the waveform. Now every spike you see in here is our character speaking. So we can just go ahead and drag the second keyframe, which is responsible for the ending of the animation, to where our character finished speaking. Now you might realize that it's still a bit off because our character has a break in speaking right here where there's no spike. And After Effects obviously doesn't know that, so we have to add some extra keyframes to balance out the pause. Go to where the pause starts, which is right here where the character stops speaking, and then adjust the range selector value till it fits what your character is currently saying in that situation. As you can see, I gotta decrease it till it only shows the first word. Now I'm gonna copy the automatically created keyframe by pressing Ctrl and C on my keyboard and go to where he starts speaking again, which you can see is right here. Now I'm gonna paste the keyframe by pressing Ctrl and V and now everything that's in between these two keyframes won't affect our text at all, which means that the pause of the character speaking won't longer affect our text. So if we play our clip, you will see it perfectly aligns now. Look at me. This is one of the most basic but yet essential text animations that you can use as an editor. However, later in this video, I will also show you how to make this cool glitch and 3D text animation. But first, let's do this cool burning effect. To show you, I already added the text to this clip of Darth Vader and you can use this animation as fade in but also fade out. In my case, I want to have my text disappear. Go to effects and presets and search for CC burn film. Drag it onto your text layer and now move your time indicator to where you want your animation to start. Then create a keyframe for the burn property right right here and leave it at zero. Now go to where you want your animation to be finished, which for me will be the end of this clip, and put the value to 100. Now depending on in which way you want your text to be burned, you can change your random seed. I like to put 80. And now you have this cool burning animation. Next up, in a bit more tricky, we have this nice head tracking effect, where the text follows the character's face. Now I want to add my animation to this clip of Batman, so I already prepared the text and of course the clip. And to have the text follow our character's face, we have to track the face of the character first. So we're going to head to the right and click on tracker. And while having the clip we want to track selected, we're going to click on track motion. Now you will see these two small boxes which are our track points. I'm gonna start by making them bigger so that the outcome is more accurate and then I'm gonna drag them onto the character's nose right here. Make sure to always track a spot with high contrast and no initial movement. Also don't make these squares too big because it will take way longer to analyze. Make sure you start from the first frame of your clip and adjust the box if you haven't already. Then head to the right and click analyze forward under the tracker panel. Now you will see that the clip starts analyzing and this might take a while depending on how fast your PC works. Once the clip has finished analyzing you want to zoom in and make sure that all the track points are aligned with the character's nose. And if everything aligns, we're now going to head to the right and click on edit target. Select the text that you want to have tracked to the character's face, press OK, and then on the right under the tracker panel, hit apply. Select X and Y and then press OK. Now when you play your clip, you will see that the text follows the exact movement of the head. And if you don't want to move the text up or down, make sure to click the text layer, press A on your keyboard, and then increase or decrease the value on the right, depending on how you want your text to be. Next, we will create this nice signal text to make your outros look way better. I already prepared the text and we're now going to open the effects and presets and search for signal. Drag it onto your text layer and again if you can't find this effect in your After Effects, get it from the Discord server. And here we want to change the settings a bit and we're going to start by putting the signal strength from 40 to 50, the signal amplification from 1 to 2, the cutoff filter from 88 to 250 and the luma noise from 1 to 1.2. After that, open the box that says luma modulation and put the TE end from 1 down to 0. Now make sure you move your time indicator to where you want your animation to start and set a keyframe for the frequency at 0.62. Press U to bring up the keyframes and now we're going to go ahead 10 frames 
and set this value to 3. Now move your time indicator to where you want your animation to be finished and put the value to 0. To make it look smoother, we're now going to select all the keyframes that we newly created. Right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Now we're going to open the graph editor and make this animation at the start a bit faster by changing the graphs. So click onto the graph and now we're going to select this yellow handle and drag it down a bit to the left. And the one at the bottom we're going to drag up to the right a bit till it looks like this. Now close the graph editor and make sure motion blur is enabled. This effect is very useful because it will convince people that you don't edit on CapCut. Next up, I will show you this hard glitch text animation. I already prepared this clip of Captain America and the first thing we want to watch out for when doing this animation is that we cut each word into a single line. So we don't have multiple words but we separate them all. And once you made sure of that, you're going to turn on motion blur for all your text layers and then go to the very beginning. Now I'm going to select this first text layer and press S on my keyboard to bring up the scaling property. And the most important setting in here that we have to disable is this check mark right here which is constraint proportions. By disabling that, we can basically stretch our text vertically and horizontally however we want without affecting the dimensions at all. And we're now going to set a keyframe for the 100 and then stretch the text however you want. You can go horizontally or you can go vertically or you can do both. I'm going to start by stretching it vertically and now I'm going to go ahead one frame and reset this value back to 100 so that the text looks normal. And now I will do it the other way around. So I will go ahead one frame and this time stretch the text horizontally, make it a bit thicker. And once I'm satisfied, I'm going to go ahead another frame and put it back to normal, 100. Now I'm going to do this however often I want, but I recommend going between 6 and 8 frames. And once you set all the keyframes, we're going to do the same thing for the next layer as well. So I'm going to go ahead again, select the layer and press S to bring up the scaling property. Disable constraint proportions and set a keyframe. Now stretch the text however you want to and then go one frame ahead and reset the value back to 100% on both sides. Now for the next frame, again we're going to stretch it and this time I'm going to go vertically and then for the next frame again I'm going to reset it back to 100. And as I already said, I will do this for 6 to 8 frames. Now once we're done setting all the keyframes and you play your clip, you will see that it looks a bit blurry. And this is because we enabled the motion blur earlier. I like this style but if you want to go for a bit more aggressive, then you can also disable the motion blur and it will look a bit harder. But of course, this depends on your own personal preference. Now what you definitely shouldn't skip is adding a good color correction to your edit. Because as you can see, adding a good color correction can increase your quality from looking like this into looking like this. And if you don't want to get my exact color correction that I use to make my edits look the best as possible, make sure to click the first link in the description because I'm still currently running a huge opportunity in my shop. You can get up to 70% of my handmade presets, which are a must have if you want to take posting and editing to the next level. So be fast, click the first link in the description and learn from the best. Limited time offer. Next up, we got this incredible 3D text. And this time we don't want to add our text effects such as deep glow and drop shadow just yet, but instead we're going to start by creating a new solid layer. So head to the top under layer, click new and select solid. Press ok and adjust it to the length of your text. Now we're going to go to our effects and presets and search for the element plugin. If you don't find it, join the discord server and now we're going to drag it onto the solid layer. Now to turn our text into 3D, we're going to open up the custom layer box, then click on custom text and masks and for the path layer 1, we're going to select our text which you can see right here is Yamas. Now we're going to go to the top and click scene setup. Once you click that, you will see this whole new window popped up and the first thing we have to do to get our text into this preview is click on extrude. Now as you can see, our text is now inside the preview and we can already look at it but it still doesn't look that right. We obviously want to add some texture to it and to do that, we're going to open up our presets, then click on bevels, physicals and choose the bold one right here. Double click and it will be automatically applied to your layer. Now by doing that, we already added a bit more texture but it's still not perfect so we're going to start, go back and then open up our extrusion model right here by clicking this arrow and you can see we have the shiny light and the bevel 2. And now to replace these, we're going to open up our materials, then click on pro shaders 2 and open the metal section. Now take the clean metal clean and drag it onto the shiny light one you can see right here. As you can see, it replaced the fill of the characters and now we're going to do the same thing but this time use the clean metal foil and drag it onto the bevel 2. Now click on to environment and then select the basic 2k031 right here. Click on open and then press ok. If you want to, you can click on to the clean metal clean gold right here and then change the color. In my case, I want to go for a bit more orange so I'm going to drag it down and make it look something like this. Then press ok. And once you finished all your settings, we're going to click on the top right ok. As you can see, our text is now in after effects but we of course want to add our animation. So we're going to head back to the elements effect and open the group 1. Open particle look and then multi object. Now enable the check mark and you can see we have all these options to change the dimensions of it. First of all, I'm going to scroll all the way up and increase the size because this text is too small. So I'm going to put it to 18 and you can still see our other text in the background. So we're just going to scroll down and disable the view of it. And now we're going to go to where you want your animation to start, which for me will be the beginning of the layer. And then we're going to set a keyframe for the X rotation right here. I'm going to put it to negative 100. You can see our text is flipped and now we're going to go to where we want the animation to be finished, which in my case is going to be around here. And I'm going to put the value back to zero. Now I'm also going to go back to the beginning of the layer and set a keyframe for this place. Leave it at zero and then go to the end of the layer and put it to 0.2. As you can see, this will stretch out the text and make it look a bit more alive. Now we're going to select the layer and press U to bring up the keyframes. And again, we want to change the speed of the animation. So we're going to add a graph. And to do that, we're going to select all the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant 
in and hit easy ease. Now I'm only gonna select the top two ones because these are the ones I wanna change and open the graph editor. And I want my animation to be slow at the beginning and then fast throughout it. So I'm gonna click onto the graph editor, leave the bottom handle how it is, and then just drag ahead the top one to the left. Once that's done, we can close the graph editor again. And the last thing I like to do to not make it fade up out of nowhere is add an opacity. So we're gonna go back to our elements effect and put a keyframe for the force opacity at the very first frame of our clip. Now we're gonna put the value from 100 down to zero, and then we're gonna go ahead to where our rotating animation finishes, which is right here. And then we're gonna put the value back up to 100. Now one last time, press U to bring up the keyframes, and we're gonna apply the same graph as earlier. So select all of them, right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Now open the graph editor, and again, just drag ahead the top handle till it's all the way on the left. Close your graph editor, then add deep glow and drop shadow to the layer. And finally, make sure you enable motion blur for both layers. Now add the 4K color correction from the first thing in the description. And if this video helped you, make sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe. YouTube thinks you would enjoy watching this one next. Take care and see you next time.